That little late night, early morning run through the neighborhood was fun the other day, but visibility wasn't so great. <laughs> it's kind of dark. Today, I wanna actually take the thing on the road where you can see what's going on, but still need to put the apron on, put the bumper on, and I need some mirrors too. So let's do a few more installs here and then see if we can take this thing out on the real road. Now we're starting to look legit. I was always a little concerned about how this would fit. It looks good all the way up to about right here, so let's make some adjustments there. The persuader. There we are. Want to keep the hot air from the exhaust down there. Don't want it coming up through here. This bumper isn't much, but it's what we've got, so <laughs> let's go ahead and get it on there too. This is one of those contortionist moments. Okay, let's do these mirrors and then we'll be ready for a little ride down the road, I think. the other side. Let's see if this thing is ready for the next step. Let's go for a ride. The generator light is still faintly glowing just a little bit. We'll put the running lights on. Nice Sunday for a drive. We're listening for any ominous noises. Of course, there's a lot of noises. We're looking for the ones that don't sound so great. So far, so good. Goes through the gears okay. I'm smelling things, but that's very likely just paint burning off of exhaust and valve covers and that kind of thing. I may pull over just to give it a good sniff. Happy with the brakes. Sounds good. There's a leak. That's what I'm smelling. Bit of a valve cover leak. All right, we want to keep our eye on that. Knew I was smelling something. Let's move cautiously forward. <laughs> This is fun. So I have a sound in the right front. Need to figure out what that is. So I think the sound was coming from this wheel. Let's jack it up and see how it spins. It sounds like those springs. Like the springs are resonating. Okay, let's, uh, let's back them off just a touch and see. Oh, 
part of me says don't back this off and just let it work itself out. I can feel the backing plate resonating. Let's drive it home and take the wheel off, take the drum off, see what we got. I just, it doesn't sound ominous. It just sounds annoying. <laughs> but we'll make sure. I did check the valve cover leak. Um, there was no drip, there was no puddle, so it's not bad. But we're gonna address that before we go on another ride. Uh, <laughs> not gonna play games with that. <laughs> Let's see if she'll happily start up. I have not pumped the gas, let's just see. Um, and wanted a little, wanted a little shot of fuel. Okay, let's drive home. Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? <laughs> Why not? Hey, yeah. Uh, Thank you. I'm on my test drive. Oh, is it called? Is it a Usually we call them a bus. Great. You too, thank you. You know, everyday thing. Go through the drive through in your 67 bus. That's just what we do. You know. Just got a big smile from someone in their front yard. <laughs> in an old vehicle, you never really know if they're laughing with you or at you. With the first road test complete and mostly successful, I gotta say we are moving into a new phase of the project where we transitioned from just trying to get the thing running to getting the thing reliable. The question of reliability is a mechanical one, but it's also one of confidence, specifically the driver's confidence in the vehicle. And I am not there yet. So there's a list of things that we're gonna take a look at here and attend to and do everything that we can to try and build that confidence and see if we can press this bus into real service as a daily vehicle. I think we got a long way to go. So let's just go ahead and get started on the list. I've got the valve covers off and cleaned up. They were leaking. I was trying out these new G-Wiz silicone valve cover gaskets and I don't know, they seemed like a good idea, but what happened with them after the test runs on the engine stand was this. They expanded, right? It's too long. It, do, it no longer fits within the valve cover. And so I don't have much confidence that when I install it, that it's gonna stay in place. So I could glue them down, but man, this is worse than it was the last time I looked at them. In fact, I took them out and trimmed some off the edge and they fit a lot better. And now they've expanded even more and they don't fit again. So really, I, <laughs> that's, that's not a good idea. Uh, but I did it so I could say I did something before I just chucked them. So these are going in the trash. I looked this up, right? When in doubt, reach out, see what other people are doing. And on this topic, I found the full range of answer. answers. Answer. 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 The wisdom that was extracted from this research was not necessarily what gasket is used, but other details about the install. Like, is this thing flat? If this is not flat, how can we expect a gasket to do its job? I need to think about that. And the other thing is the bales, right? The little metal thing. Well, let's just get it. The little metal thingy that holds the valve cover in place. This guy. Now I got these all painted up and pretty, but that doesn't count, right? They actually have to hold tension. And I did notice when I was pulling the valve cover off that this one was not as tight as the other one that wasn't leaking. So there's probably a part of my answer, right? Looking at the gaskets, I have another set of the G-Wiz silicone ones. And check this out. These are different. They've got some kind of a 
reinforcement in them. So that looked promising, but it's too small. It doesn't fill the space. And I don't like that. Right now I'm in the mood to solve a problem, not chase a new one. So we're gonna save these for another day. I went through all of my junk and I found a bunch of cork gaskets. I'm gonna try these, but I did find some other rubber gaskets and some cork rubber-ish, who knows what's going on here, gaskets. But I'm gonna try these. A lot of folks were having success with cork gaskets. And I would also imagine that those people having success with these or any other gaskets were also paying attention to these two things here, right? How flat this is and how much tightness there is with that bail. So let's try to put it all together and see if we can solve this problem, move on to the next thing. What I don't want is to run out of oil. That'd be bad. <laughs> Have some lacquer thinner here. Let's get this totally cleaned up. So this is what I'm gonna try, this 3M what is it? Black Super Weather Strip and Gasket Adhesive. It says to put a little bit on and then let it stay for a bit. I need to put some on the gasket as well. Oh man, I'm making a mess. Not very graceful of a process, but this is going to be great. Oh boy, okay. Wow, these gaskets are not going anywhere. <laughs> this is nuts. This stuff is sticky. All right, I wanna clamp these together. They're kind of a mirror image of each other. So I've got an extra gasket in between to make sure we reach down in there and have some clamping force. Hopefully that extra gasket doesn't get stuck. All right, we'll let this dry for a little bit. I'm gonna spend the next hour getting this stuff off my fingers. So I wanna compare these, but just for funsies, I dug up some aftermarket made in China bales and there is zero comparison to be made. I cannot imagine how these would possibly fit. That would be so incredibly tight. That's crazy. They're way, way smaller. So before I replace my original bales with other original bales, let's compare them. Now I've kind of lost track, but I think the one that I'm putting on top right now was the one that was a little bit loose. They follow the same profile, except that this one is a little wider by an eighth of an inch on each side. Let's squeeze it in a little bit and see if that helps. Okay, that's actually a little too much by a tiny amount. Not gonna worry about it. Let's just try these and see if that helps at all. Another issue that I would like to do, if only temporary, is deal with the spare tire situation. This obviously is not gonna do me any good as a spare tire but it's the rim that's meant for the spare tire. So let's put a tire that's laying around on here. I want at least something that holds air just to get myself out of an emergency situation. So we need to put a valve stem in here. Got a pretty neat little tool that'll do that for us. So here's our valve stem, just a little rubber valve stem. It goes through from the inside and it's actually kind of tough to, to pull that through without a little bit of leverage, and that's what this thing is designed to provide, this little valve stem tool. So I wanna put it through first and then thread this tool onto the Schrader valve, like where the cap would go. And these little lines here grabs onto the edge of the rim. And bing, lever it up, and away we go, we're all set. So now there's a new valve stem. Let's mount this tire. Hey, 
have ourselves a spare. I found some stainless steel fuel injection clamps that are actually small enough for this fuel line. So I'm gonna get those swapped out while the tank has hardly any fuel in it. Then that'll allow me to move forward with a fuel tank test where we actually fill the thing up. These clamps are labeled for eight to 10 millimeters. I would not wanna go any smaller than that. Now that it's tightened up, that does seem pretty comfortable. Don't wanna mess around with the fuel system. The valve covers seem ready to go. And the glue seems nice and cured. Scoot this up into here. There we go. I think that's where I want it. That definitely feels woo tighter. Okay, let's get the other one on and run this thing. Same here. I clearly need to replace that gasket that goes around the engine. Wish I had done that while the engine was out. I just didn't realize it was in such bad shape. So this engine will be coming out for that in a future project. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the passenger side front wheel to see if I can get a look at whatever is making that sound. I just wanna rule out all the things that I'm not imagining. So we're gonna take this apart and, and have a good look at it. But it's also an opportunity to introduce an exercise that I like to do on an old vehicle that I'm gonna be driving around. And that's to do as many field repairs, like things that can go wrong that would be feasible to do outside of the shop. So I'm going to only use tools that I have on board to open up the front wheel and have a look at things. Not a crazy idea, but this is just kind of a cross check to see if I'm satisfied with the toolkit that I'm taking along. Not a bad idea to do this with spares too. So any consumables like wheel bearing grease or brake grease or whatever else it may be, just like we're doing with the tools. So let's tear into this thing, see if we can figure out what that sound is. Now here's like a shop repair versus a field repair thing. I don't think I'm gonna carry a torque wrench uh, for the foreseeable future anyway. Since I'm in the shop, I'll cheat a little bit and use one. But if I was out somewhere changing a tire, I'd just get them on good and tight and call it a day. I am gonna go ahead and add a floor jack to the list. It's feasible that pulling the engine would be a thing. I don't know. I do have this one spare here. So that'll go in the bus as part of the toolkit as well. I'm guessing the vibration is due to this contamination in the shoe. Same thing over here. So let's try cleaning them up again. Okay, a little bit of brake clean, a little bit of sandpaper, and we look pretty good again. Let's just try this. take this thing for a ride and see if we can make that sound go away. Mm -hmm. 
this is when a project really starts to get fun. We did a little bit of work tonight and now we get to go on a test drive. So let's go drive around for a few minutes and see if things are any better <laughs> than when we started. say that I'm pretty pleased with how things are going. I just put about 10 or 12 miles on the bus. I have a total of 20 miles on it. The brakes are solid. They feel like they should. While this is not a conclusive test drive, things are really starting to look good. I think some of the stuff that we did previously, going ahead and diving into all the brakes especially and the vehicle controls means we don't have that many loose ends now. Right, all of that stuff is ready to go. If things continue to go like this, I'll do a trip out to the beach or something. I want to thank everybody for coming along on the journey, being here, being the support for the channel and the project and everything that's going on here at Haptic Garage. We're going to close this one out and I will see you in the next one with more updates. Talk to you soon. Take care. <laughs>